protein synthesis inhibitors. Next lecture in antibiotics in pharmacology. You know, formation of initial complex is very much important for the protein, protein synthesis. For that, ribosome, bacterial ribosome, similar as eukaryotic ribosomes, which acts 30 and 50 subunits. So here, mRNA, you can see the codons. Initiation of start, starting start codon from there to codon 2, like up to there are several, and there is termination of stop codon. So once joining of 50s ribosomal subunit to the initiation complex as mRNA and tRNA, so cellular 30 subunit, which leads to formation of okay, amino acid chain. Okay. So complementary nucleotide is there. So ultimately it leads to elongation. And once they are it, this is how it's formed for each three codon is responsible for one amino acid. So based on multiple amino acids, they form specific polypeptide chain. And there is a elongation ultimately leads to translation step. So it goes to the termination. You can see again initiation how it goes and five prime to three prime. It's how it goes and how it is termination. So ultimately how protein is synthesis. So based on this, we can classify antimicrobials which mainly inhibit protein synthesis and based on the steps, it may act different steps in protein synthesis, but altogether they term protein synthesis inhibitors. There are different classes of antibiotics. <coughs> Even you don't know, rifamycin. We say bacterial DNA, DNA transcription into mRNA by binding DNA dependent RNA polymerase by binding its beta subunit. Often rifamycin we Describe him separated. That is <coughs> RNA synthesis and the inhibitors. Like here in this glinosoli. Here we are in this lecture, we are not discussing, but it's one of them, which formation of prevent the formation of initiation complex. Then amino glycosides. Other potential mechanisms of action interfere with the proofreading process, causing the increased rate of error in synthesis premature termination leads to proteins in this inhibition. There are amino glycosides leads to ribosome assembly, 30th ribosome subunit. There are other like tetracycline, tetracyclines, which inhibit tRNA, amino acid tRNA entry. Proofreading again in peptidyl transferase, chloramphenicol block peptidyl transferase, step of elongation of 50s of 50s of ribosomal subunit in bacteria as well as bacterial in human mitochondria. Macrolides, it also again acts as inhibiting ribosomal translocation by 50s, 50s ribosomal subunit. Quinepristine, alpha pristine act synergistically. So it's a link of Lincosamide, so it's how it goes. Dalfopristine enters the binding of quinopristine as well as inhibiting peptide, peptidyl transferase. So quinopristine binds to near the site on 58 ribosomal subunit and prevent elongation of polypeptide. That's how it goes. Structure. So, about further macrolides, clindamycin, and amino glycoside. With all these three, have other potential mechanisms of action, have evidence of inhibition of ribosomal transformation. Further, fusidic acid prevents the turnaround over of the elongation factor from the ribosome. Rising in elongation by enzymatically modifying RNA, where we are not mainly concerned. 
termination react that is macrolides and clinamycin and also streptogramines that is clinoprestin and dalmopristin also cause premature release of peptide chain lincosamine that is clinamycin i made a mistake in my we'll discuss further about amino glycosides so it is first discovered antibiotic cause related to amino glycoside class is streptomycin from actinomycetes it's an bactericide antibiotic intermediate protein synthesis broadly aerobic gram negative bacteria and there is a toxicity and narrow therapeutic index mainly autotoxicity and nephrotoxicity so there are 16 antibiotics like streptomycin we commonly use ones are gentamicin amikacin and nepilmycin topical neomycin promycetin like there are mechanism action we have described initially they penetrate bacterial cell wall so as you know it should reach to the cytosol to act so that prior to that they should penetrate outer membrane then further transport across to cytoplasmic membrane takes place by active transport by protein pump proton pump and oxygen dependent process so there is a pouring then oxygen dependent process that's how it goes it should this outer this is will say interstitial space so cytoplasm so it it should reach then it binds to 30s ribosomal subunit and interfere in initiation complex what we discuss and ultimately leads to protein synthesis in the 30s ribosomal subunit where it binds that will be enough for you and there are other effect that is apart from cytal effect you know for antibiotic effect it says a concentration dependent killing what we discuss in first lecture they also process cause antibiotic effect so we have discussed the process for cause antibiotic effect and single daily dose what we discussed in first uh, lecture it's applicable here so single daily doses are much more less nephrotoxic so there are resistant mechanisms synthesis of plasmid mediated bacterial transferase enzymes which inactivates amino glycoside amino glycoside lysyl transferase likewise there are a lot of peptidases likewise there are a lot further decrease the transport into bacterial cytosol that also one factor in addition deletion alteration of receptor protein of 30s ribosomal subunit by mutation by prevent attachment that is alteration of the target cell and enzymatic digestion and decrease the entry that's how seen one of another example for you spectrum primarily as i said that it is gram negative aerobic bacteria such as proteus pseudomonas e coli enterobacter klebsiella shigella in addition few gram positive papilla like we can use staphylococcus aureus and streptococcus virinus we often give combination but often it is not effective against gram positive bacilli and gram negative cocaine and rose so you you have to recall those things so pharmacokinetics highly polarizing so it is therefore oral absorption is poor often it is even penetrate no oral forms are available applied locally topical like poorly distributed and poorly protein binding ability do not undergo any significant metabolism nearly all iv dose is excreted unchanged in urine that's one advantage that's why we often use as for the urinary tract infections dose adjustment is needed if renal impairment is there you can further appreciate one point it is cns penetration is less unless inflamed clinical use gram negative bacterial infection what type bacterial endocarditis pneumonia tb plague brucellosis likewise there are a lot autotoxicity is major cancer nephrotoxicity neuromuscular blockage that's why in patients in icu who are having some neuromuscular blockages cholinergic reflex so often reluctant to use okay so that's one of a point often we are in in the clinical practice when patient is in icu uh, we use but patient has some kind of uh, paralysis we often use but 
we have a cholinergic crisis also one point so we have it's a one drug which for cholinergic crisis in addition it can cause skin rashes apart from those that are within those headache like common side effects water toxicity will further concern so mainly it is affect cranial nerve 8 may be irreversible that's a problem cochlear damage is there hearing loss tinnitus more more with neomycin amigacin and canamycin and often vestibular damage leads to vertigo ataxia it's more with streptomycin and gentamicin tobramycin has both effect autotoxicity like cochlear damage and vestibular damage vestibular damage. Nethylmycin PM to have low toxicity, low to autotoxicity. Neproxicity on the other hand, gentamicin, amicacin and tropomycin are more toxic than streptomycin. It's responsible for 10 to 15 percent of all renal failure cases. Reversible if drug promptly discontinued. That's one important thing. So clinical vigilance is very much important. That's why we often do serum creatinine daily night when we use in those nephrotoxins and we observe the serum creatinine value. Is there in rice, tendency to rise? We often reluctant to use amicacin, those other nephrotoxic aminoglycosides. We often go for the dose adjustment, that is the optimization. Therapeutic drug monitoring also should be in line with this. Once GFR is glomerular filtration rate is low, clearance of antibiotic is less, so ultimately leads to autotoxicity. On the hand, its therapeutic index is narrow. Aminoglycosides. So neurovascular blockage, mainly neurovascular junction blocked by displacing calcium to focus from neurovascular junctions by blocking postsynaptic neuromuscular receptors, inhibiting ACH release from motor nerve. Often neomycin and streptomycin more propensity. Tobramide leads like to produce it. So myasthenia weakness that leads to myasthenia crisis by these drugs. Streptomycin ribosome resistant. You will have fast limited usefulness as single laser. You often use for plate tularemia and subacute bacterial metastasis. But in our country we use amgentamycin. Preserve first line drug for tubercle is used for only in combinations, drug resistant maladies. That's how it goes. We'll discuss a bit about chloropenicol. It's another protein synthesis inhibitor which was found in 1947 using streptomyces venicevulae and it was collected in venicevula. So, mechanism of action it's inhibit protein synthesis in bacterial and lesser extent in eukaryotic cells. That's why it is. It causes causes toxicity to human adverse effects. It acts mainly TIF taste ribosomal subunit. That's how it, it is there. Ribosome 58, column pinnacle, which go and by and inhibit further. And in addition, inhibit mitochondrial proteins synthesis in mammalian cells. So oral administration two form active drug itself and inactive protein. Chloramphenicol palmitate. Hydrolysis of ester bond of chloramphenicol palmitate is accompanied by rapidly and almost completed by pancreatic lipases in the duodenum under normal physiological conditions. It is absorbed from gastrointestinal tract. Peak concentration 10 to 13 micrograms milliliter over within 2 to 3 hours after administration of 1 gram. Dose. In patients with GI diseases, so in newborns, Bioavailability is greater for chloramphenicol than for chloramphenicol palmitate, the product, probably because of incomplete hydrolysis of chloramphenicol palmitate. The hydrolysis of chloramphenicol succinate may be due to esterases of the liver, kidneys, and lungs. Chloramphenicol itself is rapidly created from plasma by the kidneys, which is having a renal excretion. Renal clearance of product may affect the oral bioavailability of chloramphenicol because up to 20 to 30 percent of dose may be excreted prior to hydrolysis. If poor renal functions in the neonates and other state of renal insufficiency leads to increased plasma concentration. Distribution is well distributed in all body fluids and readily reaches therapeutic concentration is cerebrospinal fluid. That's why in older days, often used 
it's a commonly used drug for meningitis nowadays it's rarely used because it having its complex having high adverse effects so present in bile as well it's secreted in the milk readily travels to trans placenta so placental barrier penetrate in the aqueous humor after subcongenital injection so it can use for endothelitis and related eye infections fate and excretion half life of chloramphenicol has been correlated with plasma bilirubin concentration about 50% of chloramphenicol is bound to plasma proteins half life of active drug is not significantly changed in patient with renal failure major route of elimination of chloramphenicol is hepatic metabolism to inactive glucuronide or the 24 hour period 75 to 90% of orally administered dose is excreted about 5 to 10% is in the biological active form so active form is less it causes mainly adverse effect hematologic toxicity so hematopoietic stem it affects hematopoietic stem cells so its hematopoietic system leads to aplastic anemia fatal pancytopenia leukopenia and thrombocytopenia and it's it's a reversible bone marrow suppression often second and dose related toxic hematological effect of chloramphenicol is a common and predictable probably due to inhibition of the mitochondrial protein synthesis that's how it goes and it also known to cause grave lipid syndrome it's a fatal chloramphenicol toxicity may develop in newborn especially premature babies manifestation is first 24 hours of vomiting leads to cyanosis passage of loose green stool soon baby become flaxy turn on ashen gray color and becomes hypothermic apart from that there are hypersensory reactions like to direct sex trauma reactions toxic epidermal necrolysis so common therapeutic use has wide range of broad spectrum drug gram positive gram negative aerobic and anabolic often used typhoid fever meningitis or other is now it's less common use even brucellosis but the tetracycline is another drug which inhibit 50 as ribosomal donor there are different tetracycline short acting intermediate and long acting short acting tetracycline and long acting like doxycycline and minocycline it's bind with 30 ribosomal support sorry for that i told 50 and prevent the binding of amino acid trna to mrna ribosomal complex you can see here that in the with the tna antibody reading of mrp you don't want to know further if you are interested we just have this uh, all the things i here including where we next discuss about the macroids also here so but if you know we are it chloramphenicol 58 streptomycin 38 tetracycline and it also act on 30s and erythromycin later we discuss that is in 50s ribosomal subunit activity broad spectrum antibody activity is wide range like gram positives negatives apart from that atypical like spirochetes mycoplasma rickettsi and candida toxicity use of this medication for prolonged or repeated period may result in oral rash or new yeast infections nausea vomiting apart from that and you can see rectal discomfort headache likewise is used to treat wide variety of infection even it's used for septicemia endocarditis likewise meningitis about the macrophages another one so you can appreciate the history how it was first erythromycin so will lead to gastric indigestion and it's gastrointolerance is there nowadays there are novel drugs like clarithromycin roxithromycin cytromycin now there so belongs to polypeptide class of natural products a group of antibiotic consisting of macrolid ring erythromycin naturally occurring macrolid derived from streptomyces serratus sacid lay by so narrow spectrum poor gi form so telling nation half life clarithromycin and cytromycin broad spectrum activity compared to erythromycin improved pharmacokinetic properties now it's a high bioavailability better shed tissue penetration prolonged half life improved tolerability mechanism of action inhibits protein synthesis by reversibly binding to the 50 ribo 50s ribosomal subunit 
Typically, bacterial static activity, but in higher concentration, it leads to side defect. Gram positive error, sorry, errors impacts, but gram positive effect is high in erythromycin in pyrethromycin, whereas gram negative effect is high in acetromycin and decline in the frequency of erythromycin. Anaerobes, in upper airway anaerobes, it acts, peptostreptococcus like species and also there are spirobates in anaerobes like infusobacteria, likewise there are atypical bacteria, Legionella pneumophila we use, but nowadays we use for levofloxacin like third generation uh, quinolones, fluoroquinolone, we'll discuss in next lecture. Chlamydia species, microbasma and ureoplasma. Then other bacteria like mycobacteria, avian complex we use. Then trypanoma, clamina, clamin, campylobacter, borrelia, brucella, bordetella, pasteurella we use. Absorption, erythromycin, variable absorption, food decreased absorption, destroyed by gastric acid, enteric coated, it's often used as capsule, esters and esters and esters or smoke acid stable. Clarithromycin as it's stable, well absorbs, even re 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 despite presence of food. Acetromycin as it's stable, food decrease absorption of capsule. Distribution, it's extensive tissue and cellular distribution is there. Clarithromycin and acetromycin in extensive tissue penetration. Minimal CN CSF penetration is there. Often elimination is only macroid partially eliminated by kidney. Hepatically eliminated, sorry, mainly it is eliminated by liver. But clarithromycin is the only macroid which is eliminated by kidney. Other important things during hemodialysis. You, I think you know hemodialysis for those who have renal failure. We often write as a renal replacement therapy. So macroids are not removed from during hemolysis. They are a variable half life. Usually acetromycin, even clarithro, we give two times per day, 12 hour, and even acetromycin, the T1 is acetromycin is given as daily. So it, it, it has a high elimination half life, that is 68 hours. So adverse effects, GI tract, nausea, vomiting, those things, cholestatic hepatitis rare, but more than one to two weeks of erythromycin use. Tromophilibitis, Mainly IV forms are there, but in our country, IV form are there, but we are often used. And other thing is odor toxicity, if I dose erythromycin. And there are QT prolongation and allergies. There are drug interaction because erythromycin and erythromycin only are inhibitors of cytochrome P450 system. So it leads to increased concentration of. Theophylline, carbapenem, carbamazepine, cyclosporin, penitoin, warfarin, like a good alkaloid, like valparic acid drops, drugs. Therapeutic use. We often use ear, nose, throat infection, tonsillitis, upper respiratory infections, other atypical infections, likewise. Often we use prophylactic in dental procedure. We can use instead of wearing penicillin, we go for erythromycin. Likewise, mycobacterium infection also often give. Clinical use of erythromycin further. So, thank you.